when I had to put a, a little brief description of myself together for sharing amongst some members of parliament earlier in the year. I mentioned I've been represented for, um, I've repre been re selected for, to represent New Zealand in two different sports. One was a blind sport, one was not. Um, I've got a PhD. I'm the first person in the world to ever be given my job as a blind person. And there's still only two. And so I'm National President for Blind Citizens New Zealand, um, an organisation of blind people doing work for blind people uh, and with blind people. And it's all about blind people speaking for ourselves. And as a leader in that organisation, and then having a leadership role within um, the wider disability rights movement. I think it's important that, um, that I and other people who take these roles um, do have aspirations and ambition and are able to express those and tell the world that, that, yeah, that we want to be living in a better place, in a better New Zealand. There's something internal that makes someone want to go from where they are to where they want to be. And that, to me, is the ambition thing. You know, to want to go from where you are to where you want to be, you must be ambitious because you must want to go to make the change, do the things that need to be done to make it happen. I look at you know, what, what choices I had as a kid versus what my own children have and we had to make more of our own fun rather than being passive enjoyers of things. Um, you know, when I was 10 years old there were only two channels of crap to choose from on TV and quite often they were. Um, so it was, you know, go and do something else, go and get outside. There was no internet to continually inject things into me as passive entertainment. Yeah, and so when a chance came along, it was always taken. That was what my parents encouraged. It's certainly what I'm trying to encourage with my own kids. But the competition's a lot steeper now than it was back then. I have a little saying that every now and again, um, if you're not part of the solution, you're actually part of the problem. So, you know, with my kids, I want them to be cooperative. Not, and, and nice to each other, not just neutral. Because neutrality isn't actually part of the solution. Neutrality ends up often being part of the problem. As well as the people in my world who are um, who are cooperative and supportive and facilitating progress, there are people who are um, doing nothing, positive or negative, and there are people who are doing negatives. Um, yeah, so there are active roadblocks and passive roadblocks in, in my world. The active roadblocks come into two forms as well. There's the naive active roadblock and the malicious active roadblock. And fortunately, the malicious active roadblocks are very few and far between. Um, what I keep finding is that there are people who are generally good people who through their actions have unwittingly created an active roadblock. They've actually done something that becomes a problem. And I've now come to the point where I can't I can't harangue people for their unwitting behaviours. But if someone actually knows that what they're doing is an active roadblock. They are then doing it consciously and they then become on the slippery slope to a malicious roadblock. Um, and so the biggest challenge is then to educate those people who are unwittingly creating roadblocks um, so that they can actually do something about it 
you become part of the solution instead of being the problem. Okay, just through that wall is a bloke who has the same given name as me, who's about the same age, who has the same job, who has roughly the same income, and, and a whole bunch of other roughly things, but he's not disabled. I suspect that what he wants to be able to achieve in life is actually the same as it is for me. Right? We both want a family, we both want to do our job well, we both want to succeed in our jobs, we, we both like learning things. There's so many things about us that are the same. And so the end point is likely to be roughly the same. But the degree of internal gumption that he has to put into taking him from where he is today to that is less than I would have to put in for the same outcome. Things will just come easier to him because he's not disabled. I was asked three or four years ago, do you have to fight with everyone? Do you have to fight with everyone who does something wrong? And the answer is actually yes. Because I just keep getting this feeling that if, if someone treats me like a child in an interaction today because I happen to be disabled, and they have a low expectation of my ability, they'll turn around and do it tomorrow as well, and the next day. And if they're doing it to me, they're doing it to someone else in the same boat. Arrogant isn't a word that gets used in um, other countries anywhere near as much as I think it gets used here. What's wrong with having belief in yourself? We should all actually believe in ourselves. And it says more to me about the person who uses the word arrogant than it does about the person they're trying to describe. Why is it so strange that I can find my way around a hotel? Why is it so strange that um, you know, I can find the buttons in an elevator? And at times I wonder why people think it's so strange and actually instead of keeping it inside their heads, go and tell me how wonderful I am because I can do these very normal things. And the more people who go around and get impressed by a disabled person doing something <coughs> normal and expressing it, the more normalised low expectations become. You've got to be awesome in this country as a disabled person to be valued. You can't afford to just be mediocre, average. And so we champion the disabled people who do well in sport. Yeah, we love them. And that's fine. But if the only way we value disabled people is because they do something in a sports field, how many disabled people are we saying aren't as worthy. I think the only thing my mother said I couldn't do was own a car. Right. Um, that'd be something I'm going to buy a car. Well, actually, it's $100 and I'm going to pick it up this morning. You know, went and bought a car. <laughs> um, it was a heap of junk that was um, going to go to the uh, wreckers if it didn't go to my place. Bought a new battery, and we fixed up a few things that were wrong with it, and we drove around in circles in the paddocks. Yeah. And I had a hell of a lot of fun. And then I crashed it into a line of trees, and that was fun too. 